Hello there and welcome back to the channel. I'm Tony. I'm Kendall. And today we're going to talk about bringing dogs to Thailand and what it's like living in Thailand with dogs. Now, the first video we ever did, and you can find that as, on our channel, was uh, bringing our dogs to Thailand, and that is when we first got here. Yeah, that's when we were in our ASQ hotel in Bangkok. Right, that was like four months ago. Yeah. But the difference with this video is that we can tell you now what it's like living in Thailand with dogs since uh, we're four months into it as of this point. Yeah. But first we're going to start back with getting dogs here and I'm going to let Kendall take this one because she did most of the work. Yeah, so to get dogs to Thailand, and we will have links in the description that take you to uh, the checklist that I used and different things. Uh, but first of all, that you will need to go to your vet and you can find on that description on the link, it'll say exactly what shots that they need to have. And you need to have that page signed by your vet in order to get the import certificate from Bangkok Airport. So once you have everything you need and you send everything in to uh, get your import permit, then normally within, they say within three working days, they send that back to you. Now one tip, I would recommend getting, your vet, getting to the vet at least 60 days prior to your trip. Uh, I read the paperwork wrong. I thought we had to do it within 30 days and they wouldn't get my import permit back to me what was it like 14 days before our flight or something is when they got that back the yeah. timeline was really crazy yep. so i would suggest getting that at least 60 days going to the vet getting all the required shots you do also need to have your uh, pet microchipped and it has to be a certain it has to be a worldwide one i think there's two different kinds of microchipping make sure you get the correct kind because you do need to have that as well um, and then once you get the import permit uh, that'll direct you on what you need to do. You'll have to go back to your vet and have another checkup yep. and they will need to send stuff off to the USDA in your area. Ours was in Tennessee. Um, like I said, the timelines were critical. Uh, I think the USDA pa uh, paperwork that they get back to you has to be within 10 days of your trip. Or it's really close. Uh, we got the paperwork back two days before our flight. Two days before the flight, yeah. we were panicking. It was very stressful. Um, so I would recommend following the timelines. Things could change. So uh, like I said, we'll put links to things, but just double check uh, to make sure that you're following exactly what Thailand requires as far as getting your dogs into the country. Another thing to take into consideration is what airline are you going to take? And we picked the airline that had the best pet policy. Right. Yeah, we researched several different airlines. And we ended up with... Um, Qatar Airways. If, if we're saying that right. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we picked Qatar because one of the things that they do is that on your layover, our layover was in Doha. Mm -hmm. Uh, so we went we left from the u.s we left from uh, washington dulles washington dulles layover in doha they take the animals out of the travel crate mm -hmm. and they let them go to the bathroom walk them and clean, clean everything yeah that was a selling point for me now yes. i didn't believe that they'd actually do it but yeah we have proof that they did because when we got to the airport we put black zip strips on our crates um, you have to have the zip strips. I think mm -hmm. there's four per crate. And when we got into Bangkok, it was white zip strips on there. So we could tell that they right. had gotten into the crate. And, and you could tell it was cleaned it up. It was cleaned up. They had padding, different padding in there. It gave us a, a good peace of mind that mm -hmm. you know, nothing, no accident happened in there. And they're wallering in it. And the layover, they're still in it. And then they got another seven hours to get to yeah. Thailand. So we picked Qatar Airlines. Now, another thing you might want to do ahead of time and I, is buy the travel crate that will be that they're going to that your animal will be traveling on on the airplane. We bought ours, what, like five months? Yeah, at least five months. We wanted to give them a chance to get used to it because we'd had a different kind of crate for them, but it wasn't an airline approved crate. Mm -mm. So we researched, found the airline approved crate. They had to be able to stand up in it. Uh, had to meet certain requirements. Right. So we got that and let them, you know, sleep in it for like, yeah, five months. So it felt like their home. Right. We'll have a link to all these things we're talking about with the uh, with the crate as well. Um, keep this in mind too. That we bought we bought the high end travel crate. Mm -hmm. However, it has plastic 
twist bolts that hold it together. But didn't we read that the airline? Yeah, it has to be metal. It has they to be won't metal. Take plastic. So we ended up buying a, a, little, a little accessory kit. kit that had metal ones. Metal of course, ones. it's a way to upcharge. Is yeah. what that is. But you it, have to have them. Yeah, it should just come with them. I know. <laughs> so anyway, we got the metal ones and we put them put them on there and it needs to be zip stripped. But you don't zip strip it ahead of time. No. The airline will zip strip it right for in front you. of you right. yeah, when you're there. And it wouldn't hurt um, to bring extra ones mm -hmm. uh, just in case. And if you want to do what we did, uh, where you know, we use black ones and all of a sudden they turned into white ones whenever they uh, were changed out. So that way you'll kind of know if they really did what they said they were going to do yeah. when they change out everything. Some accessories to go with that crate is we bought um, the water bottles, which yeah, it's, it looks like you'd have them for a hamster or a guinea pig right. if we use those. I didn't think, our, I hoped our dogs would use them if they needed them. They ended up loving them. They yeah, use them still yeah. to this day. And uh, so, so... We had a water bowl underneath the... the a drip. Drip, underneath the drip which water. Which was a requirement. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, these things are imperative, especially it's hot on the plane. Mm -hmm. And you're coming into Thailand and the temperature here is hot. So you need to make sure that they have adequate water. The airline's just going to require it. Right. And as far as the dishes go for the food, yeah. you know, we made sure we bought high quality. Do not skimp on these right. things. You have to make sure it stays on the crate door. A lot of them are so chintzy, they just break right off. Right. They are, they're plastic or whatever. Yeah, as a matter of fact, the ones that came with our crate, mm -hmm. they broke even before we ever got yeah. to the plane. So we Very had to chintzy. rush out and buy better quality Right, um, so you have to have food in their bowl, water in their, well, we had it in the little guinea pig drip bottle. Right. And you have to have extra food taped to the top of the crate for right. them. But there's one other thing you did, we'll have a link mm -hmm. to this too. What did you put oh, on the bottom? Yeah. It's It was a dry absorb uh, crate, uh, what would you call it at the bottom? Crate, uh, you put it in there and it and it absorbed if they peed on it's it. It's a floor diaper. Uh, yeah, and, and it got great reviews. And yep. It takes up very little room. Very little it room. probably isn't the most comfortable thing for them. It's not bad. It's though. not bad, but it's not very padded. But you know, that way they're not laying in urine. It absorbs it. Right. Keeps and it off their skin. Yeah. We, it has like perfect reviews, but we'll have a link to that yeah. as well. I think we, we ended up getting the medium size crate and the medium size, uh, that liner absorbent pad thing yes and just so you know the dogs we have we have ethel our jack russell terrier and we have lucy our miniature long-haired dachshund yeah. so those are the size of the two yeah. dogs we brought with us they're around well anywhere 12 to 15 pounds right another thing to mention is airlines have certain dogs that they won't take on the airline because I think it's like certain snub nose breeds. They're afraid they'll stop breathing and other kind of dogs. So I would check with your airline to make sure that your dog is accepted. Also, I would check with Thailand uh, if you have a certain kind of dog. Mm -hmm. Just just look at what their dogs are. I don't know what dogs they allow here, but you might want to check all of that ahead of time. Yeah, it's a it's a big surprise of some of the dogs that mm -hmm. weren't allowed. It's just the way their faces are constructed. I think they call brachiocephalic something. I don't know. You'll have to look this one up. But just mm -hmm. don't assume that your animal's going to go smooth sailing. Right. Double check everything. The other thing that we knew coming into Bangkok is we had to stay in an ASQ hotel for, what was it, 15 nights? Yeah, 15 nights. Uh, but the dogs couldn't stay with us. Nope. And we all we could do was see them at immigration, you know, pay the, what was it, a total of 3,000 baht at immigration. And uh, basically, we couldn't see them anymore. They had to be taken by somebody. So I was really wondering about that. And I was on a Facebook group, I forget which one, and a lady said she had had a recommendation of a lady named Yui, who in Bank, she lives in Bangkok and she does dog boarding. She will come to the airport, get your dog, take him back to her place, uh, feed him. You know, she has her own food if you don't have food for him, sends you multiple pictures, pictures and videos every day. a day, and then brings them back to your ASQ hotel when you're ready to check out. Uh, we'll have a link to her as well, but like I said, I found her through Facebook, through recommendations. Uh, she is wonderful, her prices are reasonable, and she keeps you updated. And she'll also, if you ask, um, she charges a little extra, but she'll bathe them too, which I would highly recommend. Yeah. And she does charge a fee to pick them up from the airport and take them back to your hotel, but the fees are very minimal very for reasonable. what she's doing. Yeah. So, and we used her, we were thrilled with her. Yes, so there's our recommendation. Yeah.
One of the great things about Thailand is Thai people love dogs. There are a lot of dogs living on the streets. You're going to see it immediately as soon as you uh, start traveling, whether you're in Bangkok. It doesn't matter where you're at in Thailand. They have what they call soy dogs, Which otherwise means street. street. So street dogs. They are everywhere. <clears throat> so I want to warn you uh, about certain things here. Our dogs, we have the ability to pick them up. Yeah, because they're small. Right. So I'll be walking the dog. Uh, we go for a walk every day. I take um, Ethel on walks. Lucy, our, our dachshund, she's a little bit lazier. She doesn't Skid enjoy her and walks. And she's a little more skittish. Yeah. So Ethel, Jack Russell, loves to go on walks. And we go on walks. And I'm going to say out of 10 walks, 8 times out of 10, we run into soy dogs. And uh, you never know when you're going to run into them. I haven't run into, while I was with uh, Ethel, any aggressive dogs. Now they will, I've had some run straight up to her and as soon as they get start to come up to her, I will pick her up real quick. Um, but that's the luxury we have with small dogs is that you can pick them up out of harm's way. I don't know what to tell you if your dog cannot be picked up. Let's say you have a Labrador or a German Shepherd. Is it going to be a dog fight? I don't know. That depends on your dog and the other one. Yeah. But uh, on just about every turn you take around here, you will encounter a soy dog more than likely. And the other thing is, even if it's not a soy dog, uh, a lot of times the people that have pets don't put their dogs on leashes. Nope. So they'll, their dog will come ringing up to you, and you don't know if they're, you know, how their yeah. dog is or it. I think, and yeah. you're looking at him like, why is your dog not on a leash? There's cars going everywhere, and here's a Pomeranian running up to us. I mean, it's always these cute little dogs, but it's like, put the thing on a leash. Yeah. But uh, yeah, these are the things you need to look out for. So if your dog does not like other dogs, you may not want to take them on walks here. Right. And if you live in a subdivision that's maybe gated, where you, maybe there aren't street dogs. You might be all right. So, and that brings me to picking out your housing while you're here. We picked a house that had a backyard. Our yard is fenced all the way around, so it keeps out the uh, soy dogs yeah. and keeps in our dogs. So we know this is their little utopia. The only thing that get in our yard are cats. Yeah. <laughs> and bugs and scorpions, that kind of thing. They <laughs> all get in here, but, uh, but no dogs. <laughs> Plenty of cats though. Now, if you're wondering about things like, well, my dog likes to get groomed. Do they have grooming things? They got everything for dogs. You don't have to worry about that. We have a groomer that we go to and we, we are in Chiang Mai. So we're up north in Thailand. And we use a place called iGroom. Mm -hmm. We'll put uh, a link to that. It's like iPad, but it's iGroom. And uh, uh, she's got a, a Facebook page, and she shows most of the uh, uh, grooming online. You can mm -hmm. actually see it done live. She's really good. Yeah. How much is it to get it groomed? Uh, 400 baht. We just did Lucy, and it was 400 baht, which is the equivalent to what, about 13, 14 US yeah. dollars? Yeah, so it's not bad at all. And that's a full grooming. And, and they do a wonderful job mm -hmm. there. I see a lot of Pomeranians on her channel and uh, yeah, Bichon Frise and Poodles and yeah. all kinds of stuff. So that's all taken care of. And boarding, there are places to board your dog. Mm -hmm. And um, so you can either take them somewhere to be boarded or if you know someone to house it for you, that might be an option too. Yeah. So that those those options are there. And dog food, I'm gonna let Kendall oh, yeah. talk about this one because yeah. she's very picky about her dog food. Well, yeah, I don't like to have a lot of the fillers, you know, the corn and all the things that uh, can potentially cause them a lot of issues. So in the U.S., we had them on a certain kind of food. Well, over here, we were starting to look like in the grocery stores we went to, and they even have some pet stores, but it was all... The common the brands you yeah, would expect. the kind that, that has a lot of... Um, additives. Additives and things that I don't really want the dogs to have as first ingredients. So I found a website. Um, I used to use Chewy in the U.S., so all of those of you in the U.S. may use Chewy. They have dog food. That's where we got the pet's crates from. Right. They have a lot of things. So I found a website called Taily Buddy, so like a dog's tail, Taily Buddy. And link in description. Link, link in description, <laughs> yeah. And I've been ordering food through them. I can't get my exact same food, but I'm able to get food that's from the U.S., and has like chicken as the first ingredient and has the it's it's a better quality food now you are going to pay more because 
the import taxes that they have to pay on the food, so you are paying more. Um, but I get it shipped, and it's free shipping over, I think, a thousand baht, and it's next day delivery. So like today, we should be getting a delivery. So it's very quick. Should be coming um, any moment. They've been really good, and yeah. they have dog toys. They have all kinds of stuff, yeah. vitamins. So that. yeah, so your your animal will be, will be well taken care of because that was some of our concerns. Are, mm -hmm. You know, what about dog food? What about this? What about yeah. that? It's it's all here. Now, if you're wondering about medical service for your animal vet services, well, yeah. Ethel Jack Russell just started having some allergic problems, so we brought her mm -hmm. to a vet here, and we were beyond thrilled yeah. with the quality of of service. Yeah, that like we Tony had there. said, we're in Chiang Mai, and we live near Michok Plaza. There's a vet called Michok uh, Vet Clinic, and the vet that we go to speaks really good English. Really good English. Very good English. Uh, she, you know, we made an appointment with her via the Line app, and got her right in. They, she looked her all over, did a thorough exam, uh, gave us two different kinds of medicines for her, and I think the total charge for that visit was like 700 baht, which is what, twenty one dollars. Yeah. 20, some, somewhere in around the twenty US dollar range, yeah, which was somewhere. very very, very good. reasonable. And they were very good and we're doing a follow up appointment in next week. And they do everything there, just like a vet in the US or wherever would. Yeah. So to summarize all of this, um, bringing our animals here, the plane ride and all that stuff, that's drama. Okay, but we got them here. But once we got them here, there is a system in place mm -hmm. to watch them, um, you know, while you're in ASQ, if that's still a thing while you're watching this. Um, boarding, veterinarian, grooming, uh, it, it's all here. Yeah, and the, and the dogs have adjusted really well. They like yeah. it here. Uh, yeah. It's hot. It is hot. It's very hot, so. All the time, I'm keep, sweating all the time. <laughs> yeah, so keep that in mind if you're bringing a, uh, uh, like a, a American a husky, Eskimo or yeah, something, a husky. dog. They yeah. may be a little warm. I have seen a husky I here. I have too, yeah. So, and then I gotta tell you about one more thing is I, I was talking about soy dogs and not being aggressive, but the other day I was riding my bicycle and I took a left onto a road and I was pedaling and all of a sudden I noticed that three giant dogs are running after me and they're not even barking. They're coming straight for me. So I had to turn the bike around and I was pedaling like crazy. I wish I had this on video. <laughs> of course, anything exciting, you never get on video. But they were uh, all running after me. So yeah, that was my first encounter with uh, aggressive soy dogs. It almost seemed like they were trained though. All three of them looked the same and they gave no warning bark. They all were in a perfect line of three coming straight at me. Other than that, I think that's uh, all we have for now for, uh, for dogs. Now, make sure to subscribe. Yes, we please. always try to have um, informational videos. We're in Chiang Mai. We have a lot of videos here in Chiang Mai. Uh, we have some on real estate every now and then. But uh, we would appreciate it if you would subscribe. We'll try to make our videos worth watching. And as we always like to close out our video by saying, Kapkunka. Kapkunka.